This video is brought to you by Skillshare. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be learning to build your very first macOS app in SwiftUI. Here's the app we're going to be putting together. We've got a navigation bar on the left hand side. We've got some pretty nice content on the right. We can go ahead and tap on these other options and the view changes as expected. We're going to build it out from scratch reactively. And uh, yeah, it'll be your first Mac OS app. So if that sounds good, drop a like down below, hit subscribe, and let's build out a Mac app with SwiftUI. All right, let's go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template under the Mac OS tab. Let's go ahead and give our project a name of iOS Academy. You wanna go ahead and make sure your language is Swift and your interface and lifecycle are both SwiftUI. Uh, it's ironic we're calling this iOS Academy and it's a Mac app, but just go with it. We'll go ahead and toss this project onto our desktop. And first things first, we want to bring in some images. These are just video images from some of my older videos and a header image. We're going to be using this in our app. Go ahead and drag those into your XE assets uh, file here and jump back to your content view. Now in our application, we're gonna have that left panel for navigation and the right panel is gonna show main content. The way we're gonna achieve that is by leveraging a navigation view. So in our main body here, we're gonna create a navigation view and the right view or the left view, I should say, will be a list view and the right view, which is gonna show our primary content, we're gonna call that uh, main view. So we just uh, added those there, but we actually need to go ahead and actually create these views themselves. So let me just go ahead and create a list view and just put list in there. We're going to make that the appropriate thing in a moment. I'll go ahead and copy and paste it. And there is our main view. Now we want to see our preview. So let's also go ahead and give this a frame and we are going to give it a min width and a min height. And it's important that you give a minimum width and height. If you give a fixed width and height, you won't be able to uh, resize your Mac app window once we do give this a run. So go ahead and hit the resume button on the right hand side and you should see a Mac app preview for what we are building. So boom, there it is. So let's get into the semantics of actually building out something useful here. So on this left view, we want to show a list of options and each of those options should have a title and a image. So I'm going to go ahead and create a hashable struct up here. It's going to have a title and it's also going to have a image name and we're going to have a collection of these option. Uh, so we'll go ahead and say options plural and it's going to be a array of these option objects. And for each of these, let's go ahead and fix that typo. We're going to create a couple. So the first one is going to be home. We're going to be using SF symbols. So I'm going to put house there and I'll go ahead and copy and paste this a couple of times. So we'll say about settings, social, and that's probably good enough for settings. We're going to use the gear for social. I want to say message is one of the options. And this one will be info dot circle. So now that we have options here, what we want to do is we want to pass these options uh, down into our list view. So first I'm going to drop that right there. And now in the initializer of this view, we can say options and pass it options just like that. Now in this list view, which represents the left hand side, it's pretty simple in terms of what we need to do. We want to have a vertical stack and in this vertical stack, we're going to be doing a four uh, each over the collection of options and essentially we want to show a, a view every single time for each of these elements we're going to say id is going to be self now if you didn't make this hashable you're going to see that id self is going to give you an error so don't forget to make your model there optional uh, or hashable i should say now what do we want in each of these well we're going to have a horizontal stack with a little padding on it and I'm going to toss in an image here and this is going to have a system name of option dot image name. This guy is going to be a resizable. We're also going to have a aspect ratio to fit. Going to give it a frame with a width of perhaps 30. Now that we've got that, we also want to remember to add some text here. So I'm going to say option dot 
and I believe it is option dot title. So let's see, let's make sure that is the correct property. It in fact is. And then finally, we're gonna add a spacer. Now it looks like our preview has decided to not be helpful. So we're gonna go ahead and hit resume and boom, we should see our three options or our four options pop up on the, on the left-hand side here. Now, a couple of things to take note of. Uh, the first thing is, let me fix my preview, there we go. I'll actually go ahead and close this left panel as well while we're at it since we don't need it. The first thing I want to point out here is that the spacing is a little too much vertically and we probably want to push everything up as well and fix up the sizing of the image because it's a little large. So I'm going to go ahead and toss a spacer at the bottom of our vertical stack and that should push all of these guys up. The other thing we're going to go ahead and do is I want to change the minimum width here or the width of uh, the image to be 20. Now it's important that we're setting this after we have actually set the aspect ratio. Because we've set aspect ratio as fits, uh, we're going to make sure that these images retain their uh, one to one aspect ratio for a square. So this is actually looking pretty good to me. The other thing you could do is tweak the padding. It's a little much right now. Uh, you could go ahead and provide a constant in here. If we go ahead and do three, things are much closer together. Let's see what 12 looks like. That looks like a little much. So you can play with this number as you see fit. I think I'm going to stick with that. That looks good to me. So now that we have our actual left-hand side, let's start working on the right-hand side. So I'm going to hard code some view on the right hand side and then we're going to talk about how you can select each of these options and change out the content on the right. So this guy's our list view. I'm going to actually cut it and we're going to put it down here. We're just going to swap the position. Now what are we going to show in our content view, uh, our primary view I should say on the right hand side. Well, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is drop in a vertical stack in here as well. And then I want to add a header image. And this is one of the images that we have dragged in. I'm going to say it is resizable and we are going to say fit just like we did for the other images. Let's go ahead and run this in our preview again. And boom, we have a pretty nice looking uh, header image. Now we also want to go ahead and push all this stuff to the top. So I'm going to add a spacer here. So cool, so now that we've got our header image on the top, we've got our list of navigation items on the left, it's starting to come together and look a lot nicer. Now below this header image, I wanna show a video tile in a grid layout. So that requires us to do a couple of things. We wanna first define our columns, which are going to be grid items. And essentially, these are going to be, in our, in our case, uh, flexible. So you have fixed, flexible, and adaptive. We're going to say these are going to be flexible, and we don't need to necessarily uh, provide a spacing or an alignment. We should be able to get away with doing that. And we're going to want three columns, so I'm going to go and copy and paste this two more times. So now that we've got our columns here, we also need our video images. So we could go ahead and say videos here, uh, or we could go ahead and say video images. Let me actually call them video images. And essentially this is going to be an array from one to six inclusive. And we are going to map this to video and I'm just going to interpolate the number. This matches up with the images we had dragged in earlier, video one to video six. So cool, so now that we've got this, what we wanna drop in here is going to be a lazy V grid, and we want to pass in the columns here, so we'll say calls, and then this guy is going to be the actual contents in our grid. So what do we wanna do in here? We are going to want to do a for each over the video images, and the ID is going to be self, and basically inside here, we're gonna get an image name in. We wanna go ahead and show, uh, just to start out the image. So we're gonna go ahead and say image with image name. We're gonna make this resizable. We are also going to make it uh, fit for the aspect ratio. Let's go ahead and give it a resume in our preview and let's see what it looks like. All right, cool. So we've got our six uh, video thumbnails, we've got our header, and things are looking pretty darn good. 
So how could you extend this? Well, we might want to have a video title as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is instead of just an image, you might want to actually say uh, VStack image. And then right below this, you might want to say uh, video title goes here. We might want to also go ahead and bold it. And if we go ahead and run it, it looks a lot more appropriate now. Maybe the size of the actual uh, title here is a little large, but I digress. You guys can tweak that as you see fit. So I'm going to go ahead and just undo a couple times here. And before we talk about actually tapping on these navigation uh, items on the left, let's go ahead and hit the run button to actually build and run a real Mac app instead of just looking at the preview here. So bear with me where our Mac app is launching. All right, it takes a little longer than an iOS simulator, but boom, we have our Mac app. Now something to notice, our actual uh, header image looks different here. And how come, is, why, why is that, right? The reason is because as we resize this window, you'll notice something fairly quickly. You'll notice that everything adapts to the width and height, but if I try to make this window smaller, it doesn't go smaller than this size. And the layout reflected here basically matches the layout reflected in our preview. And the reason we can't go smaller than this is because we did in fact set a minimum height and width right here, and that is why it's important to set that minimum height and width. But even though we set that minimum height and width, if we do expand it, let's say we make it taller and wider, the header image looks a little wonky now because it is only tall enough to fit this much space. So you might want to play with this as you go and build out your application to get the desired look and feel. Now clearly this is the home view, so we want a way to be able to tap on home, about, settings, you know, social, all these uh, options on the left and change out the view. So how do we go about doing that? So there are a couple ways you could go about doing this. And we're going to talk about a simple one here. So let's go all the way up here. What I'm going to go ahead and do up here is say we're going to have a state property. And this is going to be, uh, maybe we can call it current option. And we're going to go ahead and call it zero. Now this represents the item that we are currently looking at. So we can go ahead and say, uh, in here we're going to say options. And I am also going to uh, have this view for our list view take in a binding you could have it take in a boolean directly but you want it to be a binding because we're going to be able to change uh, the selection so we're going to say current selection is going to be an integer and up here we're going to basically be passing in the self dot current uh, current option, but notice it's going to yell at us. And what we need to do is pass in dollar current option, dollar for notating that it is a binding. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to switch on the current option. And we're going to say if case is zero, go ahead and show the main view. And in the default case, maybe we'll actually go ahead and do this. And in the one case, we're going to go ahead and show a text. And this is going to be the about iOS Academy view. So essentially what we're doing is we're using the integer here to control what piece of UI we're looking at. And in the default case, basically default or zero, we're going to be showing the main view. So cool. So now that we've got this, how do we actually show in the UI that we're currently on home? So since we're passing in to our list view here, our current uh, selection, what we could go ahead and do is simply say, uh, if we're on the first iteration of options, we're gonna set the background color of our horizontal stack here to be something different. You could alternatively set the text color of our uh, title here as well. So let's go ahead and actually do that. So inside of here, uh, I am going to first say let current is going to be from our options, the nth element that is related to the index that we have passed in. And inside of here, we are going to say that the foreground color is going to be if the current matches the option. And keep in mind, this option is what we are getting in our for each loop here. And if they do match, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, use a link color, 
which we're gonna have to wrap inside of a color uh, call like there, like that. And here, we're gonna go ahead and say show the label color. And let's see if this is gonna let me do it like this. Might not cooperate and we'll have to change up how we end up doing this. Let's take a look at the error and let's see what it's yelling at us about. Referencing member label cannot be resolved without contextual type. So let's see what we've got going on. So here we can say just color dot white maybe. I'll make my life easier. And then later on we can tweak this as needed. Of course you wouldn't want to hard code this uh, at the point of production because this won't work in light mode. But let's go ahead and hit resume. And let's make sure that we are actually seeing this in a blue color. Which in fact we are. So cool. So we can see our selected state. The other thing that I want to go ahead and do uh, is also be able to uh, change the current selected state. So we're going to add a tap handler to our horizontal stack here. So we're going to say on tap gesture, we want to go ahead and change uh, the current selection. So there are a couple ways that we could go about doing this. The simplest way is to actually change this current selection to just be of type option. And what this will allow us to do is simply assign that once we tap on it. So in this case, we would say current selection. I'm just gonna say one for now, but what you would do is grab the nth option in your iteration. So cool, so now that we've got that put together, let's see what else we need to do. I think that is about it. So let's go ahead and give this a run. And when I go ahead and tap on uh, any of the other options here, in this case about, we should see that the view changes, which beautiful it does. And if I tap back on home, here we do see that it doesn't change. And the reason it doesn't change here is because we have this hard coded to set to one. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is say, if this, equals one, we're gonna go ahead and assign this to zero, just like that. Uh, otherwise, we are going to assign this property to one. So let's run it one last time and let's see what our final app looks like. All right, cool, so we're gonna tap on this and boom, we get the about section, we'll tap on this and we get home. And the nicest thing about this is because SwiftUI's nature is to be completely reactive here, we can in fact see the highlighted selected uh, color for these options change as well. And there you have it, you've built your first SwiftUI app. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like down below, hit subscribe if, if you're into iOS or macOS and want to stick around, and don't hesitate to drop any comments down below if you have any questions, feedback, or video suggestions. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you all in the next one.